Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hunter. Welcome back to the Baseball Hut. Hope you like this video and hit that subscribe button. So we're going to talk about the Mets' Pete Alonso in this video. This is not about any kind of trade. We're just going to break down what's going on here with this guy and, and figure out, you know, what the situation is. But before we get to this, I need you to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're not on, on, on X and Facebook or any other platform. For if, if you look for stuff on the Mets, this is the channel you want to follow. I'll cover everything here. Every single thing on the Mets, I will cover it here. And oh, I've been bringing a lot of new people into the channel. I thank you. Uh, now, P. Alonso. Uh, he is really struggling. I and mean, we're over halfway through the season. The Mets cannot trade him. So don't even leave comments in the Mets should trade him. You're going to get no value for him now. Uh, he's had a terrible first half. First 97, 98 games. Um, you're not going to get anything of value for him. So don't even go there. Leave, tell me he needs to go. Just to, It's not going to. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna delete the comment. So, but going through his numbers right now, the only number that's pretty decent is his doubles, <laughs> which is odd. But every other number that I see on here on his baseball reference page, everything's way below average. Home runs are down, RBIs are down, batting average is down, OPS is down, OPS plus is down, on base percentage is down. Slugging percentage is down. Everything is down across the board. Everything. Um, and it's very distressful to see a play that I like a lot. A struggle like this. He is on pace for 31 home runs, which is not bad. But aside from the COVID year, he's never hit 31 home runs. He's hit like 37 plus 40. And he's had three years where he's hit over 40 home runs. The other year was 37. He's on pace for 86 runs better than the, the fewest home RBIs that have driven in, aside from the COVID year, was 94 in 2021. He is, he is 13 games, 13 home runs behind his average over 162 games. He is 30 RBIs behind his average. If you average his RBIs out, he'll finish with about 86 RBIs for the season. It's terrible. Uh, his on-base percentage is down. In fact, it's been the same the last two years. Last year was 318. This year is 319. His slugging percentage is even down. Okay. It's the lowest of his career. It's 450. Last year was 504. Um, his on-base percentage, his, his on-base plus slugging, it's 450. It's pathetic. It's the worst of his career right now. His, his OPS, 769. The worst of his career. His OPS plus 120. Last year was 123. But you see where his numbers are going. I'm very concerned. For one, the Mets are in this, this playoff run of the wild card. And where does this leave him for next year? Now, I'm more concerned about this year. But we can talk about next year a little bit. Um, but the thing is, is that... I've been trying to figure out what is going on with the swing. What is going on with him physically that he can't catch up? I think I've said this many times over the last few weeks. Is that the batting average for certain types of hitters is an indication of a slowing bat. Um, Mike Piazza. I use Mike Piazza as an example. I've used Gary Carr as an example. Now they are catchers. But aside from them having been catchers. The one thing that we know that I could sort of go to is that the batting average for those guys uh, was in a decline at the back end of their career. Gary Carter in 1982 hit two, 293, uh, 83 hit 270, 84 hit 294, but from 84 down to 1988, it, it, it basically dropped considerably. And that was before, really, that the power started to wane. And, two, and, and in 1984, he hit 294. In 1985, with the Mets, he had 281. In 1986, he had 255. In 1987, he had 236. And then hit 244 and 88. And the, the climb home runs is also interesting. 
I think he had 32 home runs in 84, 31 home runs in 85, 24 in 86, 20 in 87, and 11 in 1988. Uh, now, I use him as an example. Mike Piazza, I don't have his numbers memorized like I did Gary Garza's numbers. But Mike Piazza, his average, his batting average was as high as 363. In 1997, he came second in the, in, in the National League in, in hitting behind Tony Gwynn. And I think he hit 348 in, with the Mets the following year. And the batting average started to drop around the sort of same age as Gary Carter did. That's why I remembered it. I noticed it at the time. The power with Piazza was basically there a little bit longer than Gary Carter's was. Uh, primarily because Gary played, I think, because Gary played on that turf in, in Montreal, took a real beating up there, as opposed to Piazza in, out in Los Angeles for the first part of his career. Plus, he came to the Mets a little bit younger, too, Piazza. But with Pete, Pete's in a different situation. He's a first baseman, but he's a big right-handed power hitter. Now, he is not nearly as accomplished a hitter as the other two guys were, Okay. The highest batting average Pete ever had was 271. Okay. Carter came very close to 300 a couple of times. And obviously, Piazza is one of the, is the greatest hitting catcher of all time. Okay. He hit 300 several times and came close to winning the batting title. But the thing about Pete is his drop will be, his batting average is more noticeable because his, his batting average was always around 255. The last two years, 217, 239. Uh, you can see that drop considerably. Uh, now, my concern is, is the bat slowing down because that's an indication of a bat slowing down. Uh, and of course, he has had injuries that people we don't really talk much about or maybe people don't know about. He's had injuries to that wrist in his hand. And your hands are very important when it comes to hitting. Because that is really where you get your, your strength and your speed from uh, is from your wrists and your hands. He's had a lot of injuries to his hands and his wrists. He had a major injury in 2016 right after the Mets drafted him where he broke his wrist. That's why he always has that pad on his left wrist all the time. And that's why last year when that, that skunk Charlie Morton uh, hit him, it was scary because it looked like he broke his hand. Um... So I wonder, really, since then, after that last injury to the wrist, has his bat speed started to slow down due to these injuries? I believe he had a couple of these injuries in college, too. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I could remember that there were in, uh, uh, issues there. So my, that's my concern, is that maybe his bat has slowed down a little bit. Uh, this ha it happened to a player, you know. A player's speed, you know, bad speed can stop all of a sudden. I mean, we saw that, if you go back as far as I do, you remember Howard Johnson. In 1991, Howard Johnson led nationally at home runs. In 1992, power was gone. And this is a guy who had the quickest hands in baseball and could any, hit anybody's fastball. So that's the one thing that's, like I said, I've seen this a lot of times with players, specifically with the Mets, where bat speed disappears, and that happens, and strength disappears. We saw that with Gary Carter. Gary Carter is a pretty good example, because we saw it mid-season. In 1988, the kid hit eight home runs in the first six weeks of the season, and then didn't hit another home run from the middle of May to the middle of August, and then three, hit three home runs the rest of the way, potential 11 home runs. So that's known to happen even mid-season, where the power just completely disappears. We might be seeing that now with Pete. Now, I bring this up because when the Mets need to find this production someplace, all right, and this production will, could lead them to the playoffs. Now, they need to find, like I said in other videos, they need another bat in this lineup. They need to find somebody that's, that's able to uh, add on to the runs batted in. The runs batted in is more just as important as the home runs. Mets need to find a guy that when he comes in here, if they go and look for another bat, get a guy that's going to drive in 20 to 30 runs from August 1st to October 1st. You're not talking about a lot of runs batted in. You're basically talking about 15 runs batted in in August and 15 runs batted in in September. 
and about six to eight home runs during that time just to sort of replace the numbers that you're losing for Pete Alonso. So that's what the Mets have to think about doing. They can't trade Pete. You don't, you're not going to get anything of value now of him because of the low production. So anybody leave comments about, oh, we've got to trade Pete. It's not that simple now. Uh, you trade him, you'll basically get your whole entire club in terms of just the um, morale. You'll kill the morale of the club. And the morale is very good on this team. So you don't want to do this right now. Then you'll have a big question about what do you do for next year? That's a different story. And if he doesn't have a good year, maybe you just tender him a contract. He's not going to take that contract. You get a pick for him. Uh, he might go to some other team, but I'm concerned that the batting average, like I said, that batting average has dropped. And I'm concerned that maybe the bat speed is, is gone. I'm not saying that it has. I'm just saying that that could be the possibility. I saw a couple of balls in, in, uh, in um, Miami that did not go out. So that, not too many ballparks can hold uh, P that. So take it for what it's worth. Now let me know what you think about this video. And of course, if you're not on X and you're not on Facebook, and you can only get this kind of stuff on this channel, this kind of analysis from, from your host. I never played the game. But I've watched baseball for many, many years. For many years, I've watched a lot of games, not just the Met games. Uh, and all I care about is the Mets winning. That's all that matters to me. And the players, the names in the back are not important to me as much as the name on the front. And that's how we should all feel. We want the best for the Mets. I want the best for, for Pete Alonso. And I want him to come out of it. But the Mets have to find somebody that can come in here and... Uh, or, you know, add on to the numbers that are that are being missed because of its lack of reduction right now. So, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you later.